Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Haunt. Today I'm going to be giving you 45 different tips that will turn you into a way better NBA 2K24 player. Make sure you do drop a like, sub, turn on post notifications. It's all very much appreciated and everybody is welcome to the family. About 80% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead, tap the sub button. You're more than welcome to the family, like I said a minute ago. Now today we got a really long video. So I'm not going to talk your head off with the intro. We're just gonna, we're just going to jump straight into it. Now these aren't in order, so some things I may be saying first, maybe things that aren't really much as important, but some things I might be saying later may be more important than I do say in the beginning. It's just a bunch of different tips. I just sat there writing down stuff for hours, so all this stuff is not in order and yeah, that's just what I wanted to say. Now the first thing is acceleration acceleration doesn't matter the way it used to back in 21 22 and any of the previous 2ks we all know if you made a small guard and you gave a 95 99 excel you're moving around the court like flash you're as fast as possible your speed boost is as fast as possible and that's not necessarily the case this year now a lot of these clips you're seeing i have a 6-2 with a 94 excel and i have a 6-6 with a 73 excel and honestly, I don't really notice much of a difference besides in the Hall of Fame speed booster badge versus the gold and then the higher speed with all, higher speed with ball versus the lower speed with ball. I really don't think the acceleration is what makes my small guard faster because if you were just sitting looking at these clips, right, this has 73 Excel right here and you look at the other build with 94 Excel, if we're just measuring acceleration alone, I don't think I would feel much of a difference. The only difference I feel, like I said, is with speed with ball and with the speed booster badge itself. I'm not saying acceleration is useless. It all depends on your play style. Obviously, like the triple strike moves, you know, the standstill triple strikes and stuff like that are going to be a different speed when you have a lower excel. But it really all just depends on the way you play. But I can say I don't think it's worth it to go 94, 95 acceleration this year. It's just not worth it. Now, the next thing that we got on the list is there's not much of a difference between the 85 and 99 three-point rating. 2K Labs tested it in the make window. If you time it in the green window, like at the full end of the green window, there's only maybe a 2 or 3% difference when it comes to 85 and a 99 three-pointer. And there was a dude who commented on my video saying, I will never go to comp stage with a 78 three-ball. I'll never use a 80-something three-ball. And I asked him what three-pointers he has on his build. He said he has a 96 and a 90 on his other build. And I asked him, do you feel any difference between those two three balls? And he responded saying, no, there's no difference. And that just shows you what type of mistake he's making by going with a high three ball. High three balls are too much of a valuable attribute for you to go with a 99 three ball and have to sacrifice something else just to get you know limitless range hall of fame and then it not be the same like it to be the same as a bronze limitless you know there's no reason to sacrifice all those attributes you're better off just learning your jumper and picking a three ball that is between 78 and 86 to be honest with you now the next thing we're going to talk about is layups layups when it comes to layups they buffed them crazy this year they nerfed the contact dunks and they buffed the layups. So anybody, it's important that you learn how to use the floaters, the jellies, the regular layups, learning how to time your layups. This is one of those years where layups are super overpowered. I know you guys remember in 2K17 when people would just spam jelly layups and where layups were overpowered. This is another one of those games. Layups are overpowered. So having a build with layup will benefit you a lot. And learning how to do these different floaters and different things like that will definitely benefit you a lot. The next thing we're going to talk about is mid-range is way more valuable than three-pointer. Now, when it comes to the three-pointer, like I told you guys, from 85 to 99, you're only feeling maybe a 2%, 3% difference, which isn't even noticeable in an actual game. But with mid-range... If you do the same thing with mid-range and you go 80 mid-range versus a 99, you'll 100% feel the difference. And on top of that, having your mid-range at a 90 gives you a lot of Hall of Fame shooting badges, open looks, Hall of Fame, green machine. You know, you're getting a lot of the really good shooting badges for a 90 mid-range. 
probably more shooting badges than you would if you went with a 93 point. So mid-range, just like layups, received a huge buff this year. And those people, you guys are going to want to learn how to utilize those floaters, those layups, those mid-ranges. Because honestly, this is one of those years where offense really is overpowered if you know how to use it right. A lot of people complain about steals, but Mike Wang's already looking into that. You feel me? Steals can be avoided. You know what I mean? Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the right stick spam glitch. This is something that has gotten banned from 2K League. It's getting patched in the next update, and it's something that is banned from wagers, banned from everything. And basically, you could spam your right stick straight up. So just keep flicking your right stick straight up when you're standing in the passing lane. And the minute they throw the ball, it'll give you a reach animation. You won't waste no adrenaline for spamming it up. It won't be just spam reaching in the corner like when you're flicking the right stick up. Every single time you flick it up, you won't get a reach animation. But the minute they pass the ball, you will get a reach animation, which is exactly what you want. So it's super overpowered. And that's something I feel like you're not really going to learn on YouTube because people are trying to gatekeep it just for the simple fact that it's getting banned in different modes. So that right stick spam steal lane glitch, definitely something you guys are going to want to add to your bag. Now, this is something that we talked about a minute ago, which was shooting badges. Now, obviously, you get a lot of great shooting badges for a 90 mid-range, but the two shooting badges this year that are most valuable are open looks and agent threes. Those two badges pop up on every single open shot. That is, open looks pops up on catch and shoots if they're open and everything like that, but agent threes, you could catch the ball in the corner, move a little bit to your left, pull a fade, or move a little bit and just stand still shoot. Anytime you catch the ball, do one move, even if it's not even a dribble move, you just run to a different spot and shoot, is agent threes. And agent threes and open looks stack on top of each other for open shots. And honestly, that is one of the most broken shooting badge combos in the game. So those two badges, I use my silver um, floor setter on um, open looks because it's a hard badge to get up. But once you get it up, that badge is so useful, man. So that and Agent 3s, that combination is super deadly this year. Now, number seven, strength doesn't matter again. Now, I'm talking from a point guard perspective, obviously. But, you know, centers, obviously, you guys are going to want to have strength. Post scores, obviously, you guys are going to want to have strength. But... You, just because you have a high strength does not mean you're just going to run into the paint and bully somebody. It's just not going to happen. And there's times where I've seen a 60 overall 7-3 post score back down my 90 strength center and completely back them down out of the paint. So strength, if you're looking for strength to help you get more box outs, to help protect you against post scores, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry to tell you guys, but it's just not going to happen. Now, obviously, strength is important for big men and lockdowns and people like that. But it's not really important in the fact of, like, getting certain things to work in your favor. Like, last year, you know, we had the bully badge, and a lot of people thought that would be overpowered. I'm going to make a slasher. You know, anytime I'm playing up against somebody smaller than me, I'm just going to bulldoze them right out the paint. It doesn't work like that. So strength, it matters. But then again, it doesn't matter to the level for a point guard. If you have a point guard, there's not really much of a reason to put it on there. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is you get a 20% boost for having your meter off to your green window. So shooting without meter is another big thing this year. In the previous years, that boost has went down like to like 5 or 10% or to a point to where it didn't really matter if you used meter or didn't. But this year, that 20% boost to the green window is huge. So I suggest as soon as you learn your jump shot to take that meter off. The next thing we're going to talk about is shot timing visual cue. This is something we talked about last year. If you have your shot time and visual cue on jump, it is not going to make your actual jump shot faster. All it does is change where you let your finger go of square. So when it comes to jump, for example, right, as soon as your feet are off the ground, you would release square. And that was it will still play through the full jump shot animation. So if you have jump or you have, you know, push or whatever the case may be, let's say you're rocking the thing after push. I don't know what's after push. I think it's like release 
or something like that but let's say you're rocking jump and then release the same jump shot is going to fully play out all that's changing is you're holding your you know you're holding your finger on square either longer or shorter and we're going to get into all the shot timing visual cues in a little bit but i just wanted to let you guys know that it does not speed up your jump shot it does not slow it down the same full jump shot will play out regardless of what shot timing visual cue you have now the next thing we're going to talk about is if you unlock mamba mentality now, I'm pretty sure you do the Brickly drills every weekend, and you can end up unlocking Mamba Mentality. That, if you save up two full takeovers, so you save up double takeover, instead of having two takeovers, it'll let you unlock every single takeover in the game. So Mamba Mentality is a game changer, especially in comp scenes and pro am and rec. You know, you unlock every single takeover, you're going to be playing like a different breed. So Mamba Mentality is definitely something everybody on this game is going to want to have. The next thing we're going to talk about is the 1v1 court. When you play the 1v1 court, you do not lose badges at all. You can only gain badges. You don't lose any badges from losing, winning on the... You won't lose any badges from the 1v1 court. So just want to let you guys know that because not a lot of people really do know that. Now number 12. This is something that is 50-50. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Jump shot stability and the jump shot creator, the higher you have it, will make it to where your jump shot timing changes less. So let's say you have an A-plus jump shot stability. Apparently, your jump shot timings won't be changing that often. Now, this is something that I thought was going to be really huge coming into this year when they told us that, but it doesn't really seem to work like that. Honestly, it doesn't seem like it really changes much going from a D plus to an A plus stability I really don't see much of the difference now you guys can correct me if I'm wrong But it's not as big as a game changer as it seems like it would be so don't sacrifice your release speed and release height and everything Just so you could get a high stability Work focus on the other things and then if you do happen to get a high stability with it then that's good, but don't sacrifice everything for jump shot stability. Now the next thing is learning actual combos to get open. This year the steals are overpowered. You're never just going to want to run, stop, and then dribble in front of a lockdown because they're just going to rip the ball. And you're going to want to learn as many combos as you can. You guys see, I know a lot of combos. I know so many combos to where if I wanted to get one clip showing off all my combos, I couldn't even do it. The shot clock would run out before I show every single combo that I know. And that's what you want. Because when you learn as many combos as you can, that gives you more time to read the defense, see how the lockdown plays, look at your open people in the corner. It gives you more room to just analyze the full court instead of just saying, okay, I'm going to come down the court. I'm going to try this move, try this move, flick the stick here, see if it works. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to do this. No. Knowing what you're going to do before you come down the court and knowing a bunch of combos so that, let's say a lockdown is playing you back and you already know a combo for when locks are playing you back, then all you have to do is look at the rest of the court, do your combo, see if you get open. You get what I mean? It'll just help you play a lot easier if you know a lot more combos and there's not, you know, there's never too many combos that you can learn. Always sit there, lab, learn new things. It's important, man. It really is. The next thing is having hot zones and lethal zones. Hot zones and lethal zones will increase your green window by pretty much like 50% if you get a lethal zone. So go to the shooting, the art of the shooting gym, sit there, practice your jumper, get those hot zones, get those lethal zones. You could do the glitch where you go into the my court. If you go into a my court with a friend and you start up a 1v1 and they let you shoot from every place on the court, you could get your hot zones a lot faster. And those hot zones will be better okay let's say you have an 85 three ball right and you get all your hot zones and lethal zones that itself will help you shoot more greens than it would if you had a 99 three ball the difference between an 85 and 99 three ball like i said is maybe five percent at the most but you're getting a 50 percent boost to your green window with those hot and lethal zones so you're gonna notice the lethal zones and the hot zones more than you would if you just upgraded your three point so hot zones and lethal zones those are pretty much more important than having a high three ball this year next thing i'm gonna go through the visual cues via mike wang and yeah we'll, we'll get right into showing you guys that 
I had to mute the clip because 2K TV always be having music in the background. They be trying to copyright people for it. So as y'all can see though, it does pause exactly where you're supposed to release with jump, everything like that. So you shouldn't even need the audio for it. But let's get straight back to the vid. So those are all the visual cues when it comes to mic wing. Different jump shots don't have different visual cues. Those are the four different visual cues. And I promise you guys learning that will help you a lot better in this game than it would be to just learn muscle memory shots because when you have a muscle memory shot you got to think there's hundreds of different timings there's delay on top of different timings and then if you switch builds you're gonna have to learn a whole different muscle memory it's just a lot easier if you learn the visual cues i promise you guys that the next thing is motion styles now motion styles will change how fast you run up and down the court and those are something that a lot of people don't really know about. I posted the first Motion Styles video this year. If you guys check back, I posted Motion Styles before anybody even knew what they were. So Motion Styles are a very important thing. Use Elite for point guards, Kawhi Leonard for locks, and then for bigs you can use Joel Embiid. I'm pretty sure there's another one for bigs that is really good, but those are the three off the top of my head that I know, and those will definitely help you. Now the next thing is defensive strength. 0 to 25 defensive assist strength is the meta. It's not as important as the old 2Ks like 2K10, 2K11 where if you had your defensive strength all the way up to 100, the AI would pretty much guard the dude for you. You wouldn't even have to move your sticks. That is not the case anymore. If you have it on 100 this year, you, you won't even really get much help from the computer. And if you go from like 0 to 50, and 50 to 100 you'll notice little differences but if you're just going 25 to 30 35 to 40 you really won't even notice a difference but the one thing i can tell you about it is if you have it anywhere from 0 to 25 you'll have a lot more control over your player than you would if you had it on 100 so having it 0 to 25 is definitely what you guys are going to want to do the next thing is pass targetness openness if you have that on 75 to 100, anytime you just hit X, it'll pass it to the most open person. Now, sometimes it won't because, you know, you could floor pass where you directional pass it using the floor. But let's say you're just in a situation where somebody's bumping you, bumping you, bumping you in the wreck, and you just got to throw the ball to make sure they don't get the steal real quick. Then it'll pass it to the most open person, which is what you guys want. Now learning icons is also another thing that will help you guys out a lot. If you learn the icons, you'll be throwing bullet dots. You won't have to sit there, pull up the icon, and then read it for a minute, and then throw it, and then the pass be late. Learning icons will help you a lot. Because let's say your big man's in the corner in the wreck, right? You're running a five out. And you run to the paint, and that big man switches down, and they, you know, they're going to run a little switch, a little zone, whatever the case may be. If you have the icon, you'll get that pass there at the perfect time. If you don't have the icon and you just hit X or you take a minute to figure out which icon they are, the pass will more than likely get there late. So learning icons, pass target openness, that is a big thing. The next thing we're going to talk about is watch footage. You know, even I watch comp players play sometimes just to see how they're playing, just to see how they react to certain defensive situations seeing how they break zones, seeing, you know, just watching footage and watching people play can help you a lot. It's kind of like football and basketball in real life, right? If you think about it, if you have a football game against a really good team, you're going to watch all their footage, figure out how they play, and figure out ways to play to break down the way they play. You get what I mean? And when you watch comp players play, you'll learn some of that knowledge like you would if you were watching footage for a game. So watching footage and just learning from watching people instead of just watching to watch is a huge thing. The next thing is research builds. Watch as many build videos as possible before you actually make a build. This is one of the years where 2K switched up a lot in the builder. And if you don't have some of that knowledge then you guys are going to end up making a build basically handicapped. You're going to be making a build not really knowing what is good, what isn't good. Like me, for example, I thought acceleration was going to be the same way it was in the previous year, so I made a high excel build first. Now we're coming to find out that high excel isn't really what determines everything. So 
researching as many build videos as possible would definitely help you guys make a better build. You don't have to copy somebody's build, but just learning about the attributes, badge requirements, what attributes are good, what attributes aren't, will help you make a lot better of a build. Now the next thing, I'm going to go ahead and pop up my dribble moves on the screen for my 6.2 and my 6.7. I'm going to also pop up my jump shot on the screen for my 6.2 and 6.7. And I'm going to also pop up my dunk packages on the screen for the people that may want my dunk packages. And then, yeah, those are all my animations and things like that. The next thing we're going to talk about is learning passing IQ. This kind of goes with past target openness and icons. But this one, you're going to, you know, when you learn all those dribble moves, like I told you guys, when you're not thinking of what you're going to do next and you already know what you're going to do when you're coming up the court, that gives you more time to watch your corners, watch pickups, abuse switches, and it'll just help you keep your eyes all around the court. You know, if you're running ISO and you're rim running and they're switching on the rim run, figure out which dude is switching on the rim run from what side and take it to the opposite side. And then if they help, it leaves perfect room for dots. You know, there's a lot of ways you could play around and abuse things if you see a small guard is on, you know, a lockdown in the corner and you know your lockdown can baby him. Call for back doors. Just, you know, learn passing IQ and just be open with your teammates talking and just reading defense and reading offense reading how the lockdown plays seeing what their weaknesses are seeing if they just let you take twos or if they play the three back hoping that you know if you shoot they could just close out learn stuff like that so then you know what to do when you're put in situations like that that kind of goes with the next thing i'm going to tell you guys and that's calling out plays and being verbal with your teammates you know if you guys are just playing the game and you're playing with people you don't know or you're even playing with your friends and you're not in the party then just imagine how hard it's going to be for you to call out plays. As a point guard, you have to take full control of the court because if you don't, whatever goes wrong is honestly your fault offensively. If you're getting boxed as a guard and you need a screen or you need a back door and you can't call for it and you end up losing the game because of that, I promise you, your teammates will definitely be blaming you. So being open, taking control, and just... You know, running the offense is a very big, important thing. The next thing is learn how to get regular lane steals and regular steals themselves with the right stick. You have an increased boost. You know how I told you guys you get a 20% boost for the meter off? You get like a 20% boost from reaching with the stick. So if you're going to go for a lane steal, you're going to go for a regular steal. Learn how to utilize that right stick ripper, that glove. Learn how to get them lane steals with the right stick. Because I promise you, if you learn how to use your right stick properly, you'll be getting a lot more steals, a lot more lanes, and everything like that. So learn how to use your right stick. The next thing we're going to talk about is tips to remove delay. Now, this game itself just has delay. That's just how it is. Because this is the first 2K where they've had to make their own servers. So the delay is worse than ever. Because we got cross-play, you can't use PlayStation and Xbox servers. You have to go through a third-party company or make your own servers. Which is why there's more delay than ever in this 2K. And that's something that you're just not going to be able to get rid of unless 2K does it themselves. But a couple things that you can do is, one, go to your PlayStation settings, lower the quality. Mine was on like 2160p. I lowered it to 1080p. Felt a lot better. Plug your remote in. Use an Ethernet cable or a monitor. And on top of that, another thing that's kind of going around the community right now is using wired controllers. People are buying controllers that have the wire already in them. And apparently it's helping them play a lot better. I'm going to end up getting one and testing it out myself. But that is something that you guys are going to want to do. The next thing is be smart with your adrenaline. In the last couple of years, when you lose an adrenaline, all it does is affect your speed boost. If you have no adrenaline, you're getting a turtle speed boost and... That's pretty much it. This year, every time you lose an adrenaline, it lowers your chance of scoring. It lowers your green window. It lowers, you know, everything. Now, obviously, you could still score without no adrenaline. I have. I've shot half courts with no adrenaline. But it does decrease the chance of you scoring if you lose them all. So, you know, be smart with your adrenalines. Be smart with everything.
now we're closing in on the rest of this video we're at tip number 30 there's 45 in this video so we've already went through 30 tips to make you better this tip is going to be learn different comp defense play styles now what i mean by this is learn how to switch on everything to where let's say you're locked down and you're playing high on the guard to make sure he doesn't get a three if that guard goes to the left side and your guard is in the left side like let's say you have a 6-6 six, six guard on your team or anybody who's tall enough to defend a rim run if they go to the guard side have the guard pick up if they go to the big man side have the big man pick up learn that switch on everything defense so then you could prevent more three pointers against better guards also learn high low you know when they're playing the screen have one person sitting low one person fighting through the fighting through the screen if the screens are too hard then just play sides left right you know what i mean learn zone defense because zone defense and wreck is gonna save you guys a lot if you're playing man to man and wreck i honestly i salute you bro because man to man and wreck is just painful it is very painful so learn how to do zones sides on screens high lows just anything basic defensive iq just learn it because if you guys know a bunch of di different defensive play styles then you guys will be getting a lot more stops the next thing is this year you have to get your body type up by doing drills so go to the gatorade facility you have to get a certain amount of stars i think it's like 50 times you have to get three stars on a drill or four stars on a drill in order for you to get burly body type so if you guys want different body types go to the gatorade gym work out you could change the body types by going to your my player appearance and scrolling all the way down on the face scan and it'll tell you body type and you could switch it and do things like that so that's how you guys get different body types in this game also do your gatorade workout so you could get that extra gatorade bar on your my player you know the the extra gatorade bar whether you're buying the gatorade whether you're getting it I've always loved having two Gatorade bars because it just helps you. It just helps you be able to have the ball for longer and have more stamina. You know, when you have more stamina, I feel like it's easier to shoot. You know, if you're dribbling and you have no stamina bars, no extra Gatorades, and it's just regular stamina bar, when your stamina runs out, your shot is not going to be the same. Like, it's, you know, if you want to have a more consistent jump shot, you're definitely going to want to have as many Gatorades as possible. The next thing is get Gatorade boost, jump shot boost, whatever could possibly help you. Now, I'm I'm not really too much in the believer of, oh, I can't shoot without boost. I'm not really a believer in that. You could shoot really good without jump shot boost. But it does help. Even though you could still shoot good without it, it does help to have them. Unfortunately, they're paid and you have to pay to get boost. But... It will help you in the long run. Now, I use Muscle Milk Gatorade Boost just in case you guys are asking. That's the one I like, but it's all up to you guys, whatever your play style is and stuff like that. You feel me? Now, the next thing is how to AI cheese. We all have the problems of somebody quitting out and then you got to play against the AI and they turn into Steph Curry, Kawhi Leonard. They turn into the best players in the league. Now, the, there's a couple different ways you could get around this. If you're on the threes court or you're in my career, call for a screen, fade off the screen, or shoot off the screen. Because AIs are not invincible to screens. I promise you that. So if you have a screen set for you, you run around it and shoot, you'll be fine. That's the first way to get around it. On the 1v1 court, there's only two different ways you could do it. And both these ways are 50-50. They're not going to be 100% consistent every single time like it has been in the last years where you could just step back and shoot but doing these two things will help you a lot more than just trying to do whatever on the computer back them down do this do that all right so first one is going to be the crab speed boost if you do the crab speed boost as far as you can the ai most likely will not be able to catch up and you'll be able to get a shot off and then if they do catch up crab speed boost towards the mid range and then hit a step back and you should be able to get a green off on them and then the last thing i like to do if there's a slower defender on me like if you're playing against a post score computer for some reason or you're playing against the computer that is you know a lot bigger or a lot slower run baseline like literally start on the left side of the court 
run all the way around the three-point line to the baseline and try and get the dunk. That works, you know, a little bit of the time. It doesn't 100% work because there's some computers who are fast enough to play defense on that, but it does end up working. And if you're somebody who's bigger or you're playing against, let's say, a 6'2 guard and you're a 6'6 and you have strength, then backing them down will work. So it all depends on the situation for what you're going to do for that. The next thing is sponge takeover perk. Having the sponge takeover perk, anytime your teammate gets a block, steal, you know, anytime anything happens in your defense, your teammates do something good, you will get takeover for that. And honestly, this year, you could get takeover off of six points if, you know, let's say your teammate gets a block, you come down the court, get two assists, boom, you should have takeover. So accelerator isn't really needed this year, but sponge is definitely one of the best badge perks. Now, the next thing is floor setters. Floor setters, these things are OP. You know, I don't really have to say too much about them, but make sure you do use them on badges that are important. You know what I mean? Badges that aren't moving for you that you do need or badges that you for sure want to keep even if they're moving. Like for me, I put them on unpluckable immediately in the beginning of the year because the steals were overpowered. It, they still are. If you got silver unpluckable on your build and somebody has gold glove, even an 85 steal and not gold glove, they're going to be ripping you back to back to back to back to back. So put them floor setters on badges that are important, badges that you want to keep, things like that. The next thing is shooting slumps. Shooting slumps are, oh, they're the nightmare, man. They're not as bad as they used to be. Like at the beginning of the year, we knew they were lying. We knew they were lying because you hit a shooting slump in the beginning of the year, you're getting back-to-back -back full bars, full bars. You could time it in the green window, and they're making you brick it. It's not that bad anymore, but if you ever see shooting slump pop up on the top right, instead of trying to shoot your way out of it, just do a quick rim run because a layup, a dunk, any of that will end your shooting slump. So make sure you guys, if you see a shooting slump, Go take a quick rim run, call for a screen, get an assist, or call for a screen, run completely around and go straight to the paint. You can shoot your way out of it, but it will be a lot easier if you just take a layup or a dunk and then boom, your shooting slump is done. Now we're on tip 38. Learn how to take the first open shot or the free buckets that are given. A lot of people's problem is they'll be down 4 points, 6 points, and they'll try going for threes, getting threes to make that comeback. At the end of the day, most things start with defense. If your team does not have good defense, then you're not going to win no matter how good you play. So take the points that are given. Most likely, if a team is up a lot of points, they're just going to let you take the two. Take what they are giving you and hope your teammates get a stop. And also, learn how to take that first open shot. A lot of problems with point guards, I even used to have this problem, still do sometimes. You won't expect to get open sometimes, and you'll be open. You'll, you won't take that first shot, or you'll be going for a clip, and you won't take the first shot that is there. But trust me, if you learn how to take the shot that is given, it'll only make them respect your strap that much more. Because if they see every time they give you that certain amount of space, you're graining it every time, then they're going to play you a lot higher. They're going to give you a lot more twos. You know, it's just the way the game goes. Learn how to take your first open shot and also learn how to take those free buckets that are given to you. The next thing is when you're going to rim run, don't always go to the center side. If they have a 6'2 point guard on their team, when you're rim running, go to that point guard side because that big man, we talked about this earlier. If you're going to the point guard side, that big man is not going to have enough time to pick up. And if he does try, it's a free dot. So force it to the point guard side instead of going to the big man side because if you go to the big man side, it's just giving them an easy switch off. And the last thing you want to do is make it easy for lockdowns. So that's a huge thing. And then the next thing, this is kind of something that counters what I just told you guys. So if you have somebody that's doing that to you, on defense, you can force the guard whatever side you want. If you play a guard's left side super tight and, you know, the guard on your team is in that left side guard in the corner and you're playing the left side tight, they have no option but to go to the right side. And then that's where your center comes in and the switch off comes in handy. So you could force a guard to whatever side you want. 
and have them pickups be a lot more easier. The next thing we're going to talk about is quick drops, Trey Young fade, MJ dribble. There's like 25 different animations you get for hitting starter three. Now, obviously, certain animations aren't going to make you better. And a lot of these animations, they did touch up like quick drops. They took out the OP quick drop. So don't even think quick drops are going to be like, oh, my God, quick drops. Oh, oh, oh I'm going to cheese the dunk. No, that is not going to happen. I promise you. So. But it is a help, you know. I'm going for that Trey Young fade. A lot of animations I like are at starter three. If you're wondering, you know, the Steph Curry escape is one of the best moves in the game. Starter three. A lot of great animations get unlocked there. So if you can, not everybody's a rep grinder, but at least try and hit starter three for those animations. The next thing is when you're going up against a post score, the only chance you have. I'm being honest with you, unless you're another post scorer or a big man who can stop it consistently, your only chance against a point guard, I mean a post scorer is if you have steel on your build. If you have steel on your build, when a po when you pass the ball into a post scorer and they catch it at that three point line, they can't go directly into an L2. It takes like a minimum of like a second or two for them to go and cross that three point line to get into that L2. And that is your reach sweet spot run up as soon as you pass the ball and the minute they move reach i graded a post score out from doing this and i literally got 12 steals on him from doing this so it is something that you guys are definitely going to want to learn how to do is abusing that first second steal on post scores the next thing we're going to talk about is every game mode has a different shot timing this kind of goes with what i told you guys earlier learning that visual cue is more important this year than anything else because if you're just going off of muscle memory, the theater, the beach court, the actual parks, the rec, stage, everything is a different timing. So if you have a muscle memory, you're really putting yourself through a lot by learning muscle memories on this game. The next thing we're going to talk about and one of the last things we're going to talk about is put your hands up to contest. Only jump if the dude is already past you. If he's past you, then yeah, you could go for the chase down. If you're playing against somebody that is 10 times bigger than you, yeah, try and perfectly time your jumps to get more contest. But most of the time, if you just keep your hands up, you're going to get a lot better contest than you would if you jump. Because a lot of people are just waiting for you to jump to take it up. So put your hands up to contest, man. That's one of the most important things that has been a thing for a long time. Now, last year, 2K22, 2K23... You didn't really get rewarded for having hands up. People could paint mash with your hands up and they'll eventually get the bucket. But this year you get a lot more rewarded than you would in the last couple of years. The last thing we're going to talk about today is Zens are not back, man. This is coming from someone who used to own a Zen. Zens are trash. You get maybe three or four shot timings with a Zen. And having three or four shot timings when there's a hundred plus shot timings in this game... You literally have to have pretty much full stamina every single time you shoot in order for that Zen to work. So just because you're playing against somebody who's greening their shots does not mean they have a Zen. Now there is things worse than a Zen out there, but it is not a Corona Zen. And if you are playing against somebody or you think somebody has a Zen, just think. It is going to cost them over $400 to have the thing that is better than a Zen. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to put you on the game. But just know, they're $350 right now, plus the scripts you got to buy for it and everything like that. The majority of the 2K players are not spending $400, $500 just to cheat. I'm just telling you that right now. So just because you play against somebody green in every single shot does not mean they have a Zen. Now, if they have the meter on... And they're greening every single shot. Obviously, you can't see somebody's meter from defense, which kind of sucks. But if you're watching a streamer, they got their meter on. They're greening every single shot. They got what they got. They got it. It's not the Zen, but they got it. Just know that.